In this video, I'm going to discuss a standalone program that you can use to extract meteorological data to a regional conformal map grid from a global latitude-longitude grid. This program can only be used on meteorological data files that have been formatted for use by the high-split model. These files can be found on the NOAA ARL Ready web server. A remapping between two different grids requires interpolating the data from the latitude-longitude grid points surrounding each conformal map grid point, and then rotating the wind vectors from their true Earth coordinates to values relative to the orientation of the conformal grid. In this example, at the location shown, 90 degrees west and 60 degrees north, a west wind vector relative to the latitude longitude lines would show the wind components as u equals 1 and v equals 0. After transformation to the polar stereographic grid, the wind vector relative to the conformal grid would show u equals 0 and v equals minus 1 at the same location. Such rotational transformations are applied at every grid point. At this point, you might be wondering why such a data transformation is even necessary, because HighSplit can be run off the original data file. The primary reason, at least for me, and that is why I developed this program, is that the newest global meteorological data files for high split at a quarter degree resolution have become quite large, just under three gigabytes per day. So if you're going to run longer duration high split simulations, especially for regional rather than global applications, and over longer periods, perhaps monthly or seasonal, the storage requirements can become quite substantial. Another issue is the computational time required for HighSplit to process these global data files. Although HighSplit uses a subgrid to limit the data processing to the grid points surrounding the computational point, when the computational point is near a domain boundary, such as the international dateline or the poles, the subgrid is disabled and the entire data grid must be processed during the calculations. For those of you familiar with the high split forecast and archival meteorological data available through the Ready website, you know that an online data extraction tool can be used to provide a similar result to the program discussed here. The online program, however, does not remap the data, but provides an extract on the same latitude-longitude grid as the original data. Although it is not available through the graphical user interface, this online program is also provided with the high-split distribution in the exec directory, where it is called extract underscore grid. Perhaps the best way to illustrate some of the data extraction issues is to run an example, such as a trajectory in the North Polar region. A latitude-longitude grid provides artificially fine spatial resolution in this region due to the decreasing longitudinal spacing of the grid points with increasing latitude. In this region, remapping to a conformal grid will provide the greatest file size reduction.
For the example calculation, I will start by downloading the GDAS1 data for the week starting November 1st, 2022. This file is at 1 degree resolution, global in extent, on pressure surfaces, and the data are at 3 hour intervals. The file size is about 600 megabytes, rather modest compared to the 2.9 gigabytes per day required for the quarter degree GFS archives. Two regional extraction files will be created. The first, using my LL2CMAP program, which will remap the data to a polar stereographic projection centered over the pole, using 90 grid points in X and Y, defaulting to the resolution of the input data file, which is 111 kilometers latitudinally, the distance equivalent to one degree resolution. With the diagnostic output turned on, detailed information is provided about the input and output files while the program is running. At completion, the size of the output file, called xfile.bin, is 69 megabytes, almost a factor of 10 less than the original, but of course it is now regional and no longer global in extent. The second extraction will use the Extract Grid program, which is located in the High Split Exact Directory. All required data entry values will be prompted by this program. Due to the nature of some of the data grids, the corner points for the extract are not always easy to determine. In this case, 60 north, 120 west, and 90 north, 100 east, covers the domain of interest and provides an output file of similar size, about 63 megabytes, to the previous polar stereographic extract. However, the data in this file are still on a latitude-longitude grid. We will do three high-split isobaric trajectory calculations, all starting on 1 November 2022 from 80 degrees north, 40 degrees east, at 500 meters above ground level, for a duration of five days, using the three data files, the original GDAS, and the two extracts. The single trajectory calculation using the original GDAS, shown here, does a small loop at day three and approaches the pole on day four before continuing south. The calculation using the data remapped by LL2CMAP, xfile.bin, has the same overall path as the original with the loop at day three. The similarities and differences are more evident when these two trajectories are superimposed. An exact match is not expected 
as there is interpolation involved when the data are remapped. And finally, the calculation using the data file extracted by the online tool, zfile.bin, showed that the trajectory terminated prematurely, toward day 4, as the trajectory approached the pole. This is because HiSplit can only handle computations across global grid boundaries using a global grid. The polar stereographic remapping, or using the original global GDAS data, avoids this problem as an artificial boundary no longer exists at the pole. Just for fun, if we superimpose the GDAS and the previous latitude-longitude extract trajectories, since they are both using the same data and no remapping was involved, you would expect them to be identical until the extract trajectory terminates. However, slight differences are evident from the beginning. This is because the extract data are repacked, which means that the precision may change, resulting in very slight differences at some of the grid points between the two data files. One might consider this as one of the underlying uncertainties fundamental to all trajectory calculations. The LL to CMAP source code and a limited number of pre-compiled executables can be downloaded from the GitHub repository. Also, a detailed discussion of all the command line arguments for the LL to CMAP program can be found at highsplit.com. <laughs>